You know, I'm all in uh, to reelect people who got things done. That's what this country needs. We need to remember that we can get good stuff done and that we are by far the best positioned country for the 21st century to continue to lead and make a difference. And we just got to get the naysayers and the whiners and the snipers, uh, you know, to just go to the back of the room because they're not helping at all. You just heard failed presidential candidate Hillary Clinton scold the whiners and the naysayers for daring to vocalize concerns about Joe Biden. Now, we're going to watch more of that clip in a moment so you can see what kind of a case she's making for Biden. But in general, you can expect to see a lot more from Hillary Clinton lately because for some reason, the Biden administration has chosen to trot out her dusty ass to help him win his reelection effort. Oh, goody. NBC News reports the former secretary of state is emerging as a key player in his reelection campaign. And I think that Mehdi Hassan put it best. Ah, yes. When you're a Democrat struggling to beat Donald Trump, you call for help from checks notes. The last Democrat to lose to Donald Trump. Exactly. And I'm so sure I'm very confident that the more that voters see of Hillary Clinton, the more they're going to like Democrats for sure. That's definitely going to happen. Now, whenever the Democratic Party senses that a corporate Democrat is in danger of losing an election, they call on the Clintons to save them. For example, Hillary Clinton endorsed Elliot Engel over Jamal Bowman. She also endorsed Chantel Brown over Nina Turner. And Bill Clinton made robocalls for corrupt conservative Democrat Henry Cuellar last November. So the fact that Biden's campaign is enlisting Hillary Clinton, of all people, is a sign that they're actually worried. And they should be. Poll after poll confirms that Trump is ahead of Biden in hypothetical matchups, and he's even behind in key swing states as well. A CNN poll finds that he's 10 points behind Trump in Michigan. And this poll comes after we learned that his support from Arab Americans dropped 59% to 17%, according to an Arab American Institute poll. And the person he's now calling on to help him to defeat Trump is the person who couldn't defeat Trump herself, in part because she lost the key swing states that he's now losing in also. And it's just bizarre to me that anyone would ask Hillary Clinton for advice on how to win elections when she ran one of the worst campaigns in modern history. I mean, the general election was a catastrophe. But if you go back to even before that, during the Republican primary, she propped up Donald Trump because she thought that he would be easier to beat in the general. And we all see how that turned out. And now he's asking the person who gave us Trump how we can defeat Trump. I mean, she didn't even bother to take the Rust Belt seriously. She gave progressives the middle finger and she expected voters to flock to her specifically because Donald Trump was so detestable. But that didn't work. And now Biden, for some reason, is crossing his fingers and hoping that negative partisanship will somehow work this time. We already learned that that's not going to work. So why would you do that strategy and then call on Hillary Clinton of all people to try to help you win? It's just it feels like the Biden administration is genuinely trying to lose like he doesn't want to hurt his ego and not run for a second term. So he'd rather lose than just like step aside. It's just it's maddening. I don't know what the fuck they're doing. Every single person who's part of Biden's campaign should just be fired at this point. They're all terrible. But I mean. It's so infuriating to even entertain this idea that Biden doesn't know why he's so unpopular. It's not like he's scratching his head wondering why all of a sudden he's polling so poorly because we know exactly why we're in this predicament where he seems poised to lose to Donald Trump. This isn't rocket science. He's doing a genocide. That is specifically why he's losing. But therein lies the main reason why he's enlisting the help of Hillary Clinton. NBC News reports, Clinton published an op-ed in The Atlantic that forcefully made the case for Biden's approach to the Israel-Hamas war, putting her credibility on the line as progressives demanded a ceasefire. It's not just progressives, it's the majority of the country. But anyways, and two weeks before that, at a Columbia University panel on the anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Clinton shut down a heckler who asked her to comment on Biden's warmongering. They later add, as a a former secretary of state, she has the bona fides to provide Biden with the measure of political cover amid a war in the Middle East that has split the Democratic Party. Biden and Clinton have not always been close. She elbowed him out of running in 2016, but the president is thirsty for allies right now. His approval numbers are at an all-time low, and he is running neck and neck with the Republican frontrunner, former President Donald Trump, who is under indictment in four separate cases. 
And it should not be lost on anyone that any Democrat would have such a difficult time defeating someone who is facing 91 criminal charges. Like, if you can't beat that person, then the problem is you. And in this instance, Biden knows that the problem is is him. He knows that his support of genocide is unpopular. But rather than just stopping and doing the right thing, he is choosing to have someone else tell us to shut the fuck up about it on his behalf so he doesn't look more like a bad guy than he already does. But I mean, it's too late for that. And he is continuing to dig his heels in as he hemorrhages support. And then he wonders why people aren't supporting him, why they're not enthusiastic to get behind him after all of the terrible atrocities that he's part of. The U.S. vetoed a U.N. Security Council resolution in support of a ceasefire and the release of all hostages, which comes after the Biden administration bypassed Congress to provide Israel with tank shells that will undoubtedly be used to slaughter even more civilians, which is a reasonable expectation, considering the fact that civilians make up 61 percent of casualties. They're not even trying. And to make matters worse, the U.S. continues to play dumb when it comes to Israel's war crimes and has the audacity to feign concern over reports suggesting that Israel is using white phosphorus after we literally supplied them with the white phosphorus that we're concerned that they may be using. Those are U.S. made white phosphorus smoke bombs that were manufactured at a plant in Louisiana. So the U.S. isn't just enabling Israel's war crimes. We are fully complicit here. Our tax dollars are paying for the bombs that we are dropping on children in Gaza. Biden is a willing participant in the ethnic cleansing and indiscriminate slaughter of Gazans. And if we actually respected international law in this world, Benjamin Netanyahu would be tried at The Hague for committing crimes against humanity. And guess what? Biden would be right there with him being tried as an accomplice. But when you're the global hegemon, you can do anything. You can get away with anything. You can even get away with murder, literally. But you can't escape the backlash from your own country when you live in a democracy. And that's what Biden is currently experiencing right now. No amount of negative partisanship or condescension from Hillary fucking Clinton is going to galvanize voters to support a genocidal president. That's just not going to happen. They've made that very clear. They're telling you what they want, and you're not listening to them. Therefore, you are losing support. Cause meets effect. It's that simple. And there are only two options for Biden at this point. He can either stop the genocide and maybe still win, or he can keep doing the genocide and definitely lose. But at this point, Biden is opting for the latter option, which is devastating. That's his choice. That's what he's choosing. We have no say in a democracy. Even though most Democrats want a ceasefire, even though a majority of the country wants a ceasefire, Biden is telling us no and still expecting to win this next election. And now he's wondering why he's going down in the polls. God, it's such a fucking mystery. Unbelievable. Now, let's go back to Hillary Clinton and that interview on Morning Joe, because she is going to make the case for Biden while completely sidestepping his genocide issue entirely. So let's listen. Um, from your experience, which you've had many viewpoints, um, of effective presidency and, and building teams as a first lady, as a member of the Senate, as a secretary of state, as a presidential candidate, you know, putting together a team and an administration doesn't come easily and isn't magic. Um, and it, it's definitely not an argument that President Biden has had an effective presidency, that he has gotten things done, whether or not people agree with his policies. Do you think the questions about his age are legitimate? Well, the question's legitimate, but the conclusion that people draw is, I think, off base. Uh, look, I am supporting President Biden and Vice President Harris because of what they've gotten accomplished. I'm kind of old fashioned that way. I like to see people, you know, as I said, tackle big problems, bring people together and try to forge solutions. And I don't know about anybody else, but I'm kind of happy that we're fixing our bridges and our roads and the rest of our infrastructure. And I'm thrilled that we are going to compete with China on advanced manufacturing and that we're going to make the transition to clean energy uh, as quickly as we possibly can, plus bring down drug prices. And I could go on and on. So when people say to me, well, he's old. Yeah, that's right. But look at what he's gotten done. And 
Then, if that's not enough for you, look at the alternative. A wrecking crew, people who, as Mitt Romney said, do not even believe in our Constitution, who don't want to solve problems, who only want to engage in meaningless, endless partisan sniping and uh, insulting. So literally for me, um, when I look at what's been accomplished with the team that was put together, uh, I am very impressed. Oh, are you now? Well, I guess that settles it, everybody. The person who all of us fucking hate is impressed by Biden. So you better shut the fuck up about his weaknesses. Don't say anything. Just shut up and vote for him. Don't vocalize even any criticism. Otherwise, you support Donald Trump. Listen, I'm not going to deny the danger that Trump poses because he absolutely would be a catastrophe. But saying Trump bad over and over again is a demonstrable electoral failure. Hillary Clinton, of all people, should know this. But that's how she's making the case for Biden. Well, if you're not impressed by his accomplishments, just look at the alternative. You tried this. It didn't work. It's like Biden is trying to lose. Jesus Christ. What do you even say to that? They're so out of touch, so tone deaf, so resistant to just doing the bare fucking minimum to appease their base. I hate them so much. But listen, Biden knows what he needs to do. Or should I say he knows what he needs to stop doing to try to salvage this election before it's too late. If he does not do that, this loss will be his fault and his fault alone, not the fault of voters. You don't get to blame disillusioned voters. You don't get to blame Arab Americans. You don't get to blame young people. You don't get to blame third party voters because if they are telling you a year away from the election what they want and you refuse to listen to them, you are the one who fucked up, not voters. So get it together before you lose to Trump, you fucking idiots. You know. You, you, you know. You know the, you know the thing, thing. You're getting nervous, man, man.